welcome back to the YouTube. So today we've got a, a workout for you. This is gonna be part one of three, I'd say, um, of a workout series. So it's gonna be a push day-to-day -day chest, shoulders and triceps. Um, so we're here at Paddle Club. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, so let's get it going now. Today I'm gonna to delve into the detail um, as much as I can on, on some of these exercises and try and give as, much, as many pointers, as many cues as I can to help you out with these exercises if you do them yourselves and if you're trying this workout out as well. It's gonna be a good one, gonna to, to get a good pump. Um, so stay tuned, let's get it. All right, so starting off on the pec deck, using it as a priming exercise. Just wanna get some, some blood into the muscle here. Um, I'm not going too heavy, so we're gonna be keeping everything to about two reps in reserve. Um, very important cues here, so obviously to understand that on this machine in particular, it's going to be heaviest at its length and range as you're down at the bottom. So what you want to try and avoid is any bouncing. What that's going to do is just take the delts into it completely, risk injury, um, and of course take away momentum from the exercise itself. So nice pause at the bottom, reset, and push up into the contraction into the shortened range. You're in a content gym, which is, I think, what it's turned into. And there's a fucking phone holder on the side of the machine connected. Form clip. Right, so the second movement now we've got, as usual, a plate loaded incline press, which is obviously going to be targeting the upper portion of the chest, which is what the, the, the part of the chest that I want to bring up the most, which is why I'm positioning it at the start of my workout now. What you see me do there is a few warm-up sets, a few feeder sets. I'm not going to failure on these, just simply getting some blood and muscle. I am obviously out of breath, which is important, and I always do preach this as well. Even though they're warm-up sets, make sure you're still training intensely. You don't just be doing two or three and like barely feeding it. You want to get some blood in the muscle and get ready for the, for the top sets. So and now what I'm going to do is progressively work up to my heaviest weight and get a top set done. So I'll do as many as needed. However, I'm typically doing three warm up sets, two, three, four maybe feeder sets and then obviously getting that top set at the end of that. One thing I will say though is make sure you're standardizing your lifts. So if you're doing three feeder sets on the incline press, for instance, try and keep that the same for each session so that you are used to it. And as I said, just standardizing that lift as a whole. Around to a flat press now, targeted, obviously started off by targeting the upper part of the chest, as I said. Now we're into a flat press, this is gonna target pretty much the majority of the of the pec, with a bit more emphasis on the lower pec. Um, so yeah, we obviously this, I'd say it can be done with the barbell, it's not gonna be the same. 
This has got a bit of a more converging path, and of course, it's just a sink. You can actually split the movement into two arms. <clears throat> Other alternatives, dumbbell, flat press as well. Doing it on a machine, though, if you've got it available, use it. I'll always, always preach machines for stability um, and just quality of the rep in general. Right, now into what I will pretty much say is the top set, judging by weights that I've logged in the past. This will be my top set. Three plates aside, gonna aim for eight reps. As you can see, I'm adding wrist straps in. Benefit of these, again, I always, I use this word about 10 times in a video, but they provide stability for the wrists and they minimize the risk of your wrist overextending. So yeah, definitely, definitely one to use. All right. <laughs> <coughs> Right, there's a perfect example of managing expectations in the gym and something that I get a lot with, with clients. They ask me, should I be progressing with my list every session or what happens if I've dropped a certain amount of weight that I was lifting? That's just happened there. I usually get eight reps in that easily. Got six now. It's important to not leave the gym dwelling on it unless you're standardizing every single area of your workout. So the time you train, what you've had to eat before it, the environment, climate, the machine itself, you, the amount of sleep you've got beforehand. And if you're not standardizing every single one of them, then you can't be expecting to have progression every single session or at least maintain your, uh, your lifts every single session. An example is I usually train in the evenings. It's the morning, that's number one. Didn't get the best night's sleep. Number two, I've not got much food in me. Number three, and again, the final one, a very simple one. This is a piece of kit I don't typically use. I'll be using a different branded kit, for instance. So just want to keep in mind, I'm not gonna let it play on my mind or anything like that. Not every session will be perfect. <sighs> right into another incline press. So I was actually gonna go for the dumbbells, however, and again, I'm using that word again, stability. For me, I've had issues in the past with my, my left shoulder, my rotator cuff. I feel that dumbbells do put quite a bit of stress on that simply, just down to the, the lack of stability. And obviously, as you come up, for instance, every single rep that you're gonna see me do here is controlled because it's got a fixed line of pathway. Now, with dumbbells, the opportunity to lose stability and lose control is higher. So I like to offer machines where I can, just to ensure I'm not getting any injuries. All right, so we're now into the shoulder portion of the workout. Of course, as I said, chest, shoulders, and triceps are all being hit on this push session. So we're now into standard dumbbell lateral raises. I absolutely love using dumbbells for this movement. It's, I used dumbbells when I started training, and I still use them now. A few things to obviously keep in mind here. You don't want to be swaying about. You want to give yourself a nice, stable environment to be able to actually just engage the, the lateral uh, delt as much as possible. You don't want to take all momentum out of it. If you start swinging, all you're going to start doing is making it easier which is obviously, as I said, going to take emphasis off of the lateral delt.
Uh, utilizing partials at the end there. There'll be a couple where you're not going to get a full range of motion. Just use partials at the end. I always preach that as well. You still get some sort of stimulation through the lateral delt. Not as much as you would by getting it fully short at the top, but you will still get a couple extra reps out. Right, triceps to finish off, of course, using the rope extension, always try my best to use a long rope extension or a double rope, but I've walked around the entire gym, there aren't any, so we're just using the normal rope. As I'll always say, the, using a longer rope or using two ropes at once, is just going to allow you to get further past your hip, which is going to give you that second little level of range of motion, which is what you want to be looking for. But if not, just try your best to get the best contraction possible with the, with the shorter rope. <sighs> Something I do want to touch on, um, and, it's a, and it's a subject that I think is worth talking about, especially because I do get asked a lot of questions of you know, how I've achieved the physique I've achieved, what I do on a daily basis. And it's, it's just, of course, discipline, dedication, making sure that you are on point with everything nutrition-wise, and obviously being consistent, as I said. But one, one key factor that is often forgotten is intensity, and training with a good level of intensity. As you've seen there, I'm taking my top sets to failure every single time. I train by myself. I don't have a training partner, I don't have a spot, but I come in here every single time, every, every single session, I give it my 1,000%. And that, that is honestly why I've reaped the rewards of it and I, and I am in, in the shape that I'm in. And it's, I don't want to sound cocky, I don't want it to come across as arrogant, but it's very, very simple. If you're not taking your, your sessions to failure with, the, with maximum intensity, then you're not going to be seeing the results that you want to be seeing. It really is as simple as that. So I hope, I hope the camera captured it well enough um, and captured the, the intensity that I've been training with because this is something that you need to be thinking about every single session. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this session. That is going to be it for the video. Um, just a purely workout based video. I hope you, as I said, I hope you took something away from it. Keep your eyes peeled for the next two workouts. They're going to be a pull workout and a leg workout in detail, probably filmed here as well. Um, so those are coming up. Um, stay tuned now that I'm here full time in Spain, in Marbella content's going to get very, very good. So going to be aiming for one video per week on Sundays. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.